this is the inferior surface of the brain uh, it is divided into two parts by the stem of the lateral fissure or the beginning of the lateral fissure the stem of the lateral fissure begins actually on the inferior surface of uh, the brain uh, it divides the inferior surface into two parts the orbital surface so this is the orbital surface and this is the tentorial surface of the brain the orbital and the tentorial surface of the brain and here we have the anterior and posterior ends of the um, sulcus which is dividing the brain into two parts the right and left cerebrum uh, which is called the longitudinal uh, sulcus or the longitudinal fissure the orbital surface which is lying in front of the uh, stem of the lateral fissure we have here a structure called the olfactory bulb this olfactory bulb extends to the anterior surface, anterior frontal pole of the brain, has the function uh, for uh, olfaction. It's running in a sulcus called olfactory sulcus. So the sulcus just beneath the olfactory bulb is called olfactory sulcus. Olfactory sulcus. And in the olfactory sulcus, you could identify the olfactory bulb. Uh, the rest of the orbital surface is divided into four parts by orbital sulci. So they are orbital sulci. So simply the gyri of the frontal or the orbital surface are this gyrus here, medial to the olfactory sulcus, which is called gyrus rectus or rectus gyrus gyrus rectus this is gyrus rectus uh, of the brain medial to the olfactory sulcus and uh, these gyri uh, these gyri here between the edge shaped orbital sulci are called orbital gyri so they are called orbital gyri okay uh, this is the tentorial surface of the brain here this is the tentorial surface of the brain this sulcus here which separates between the midbrain here it's lying the midbrain the first part of the brain stem is the midbrain so it appears here as a cut surface of the midbrain this sulcus which separates between the midbrain and the tentorial surface is called hippocampal gyrus, a uh, hippocampal sulcus. So this sulcus is the hippocampal. And this is the midbrain. And we have another sulcus here. We have another two sulci actually. So the first one is called collateral sulcus. This is collateral sulcus. And this one is called occipital temporal. Because it's lying between the occipital pole and the temporal pole of the brain. So what about the gyri on the inferior or the tentorial surface of the brain? The gyrus which is lying between the uh, hippocampal sulcus and the collateral is called parahippocampal gyrus. So this is the parahippocampal. And this one is called medial occipital temporal and this one is called lateral occipital temporal gyri so the medial occipital temporal 
is lying between the collateral and the occipitotemporal gyrus and the lateral occipitotemporal is lying lateral to the medial occipitotemporal uh, gyrus. Uh, thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, online practical session which was focusing on the sulci, gyri and functional areas which are important uh, on the cortex. Thank you. And now we are looking on the inferior surface of the brain and we will describe sulci and gyri that are located on the inferior surface of the brain. So the inferior surface is divided into two parts by this sulcus. This is the stem of the lateral sulcus or the stem of the lateral fissure. So the beginning of the lateral sulcus is actually on the inferior surface of the brain and then it curves posterior on the lateral or the superior lateral surface of the brain as the posterior ramus of the lateral fissure. The stem of the lateral sulcus is dividing the inferior surface of the brain into orbital and tentorial parts. The orbital part in front of the stem and the tentorial behind the stem of the lateral fissure. In the orbital part, this sulcus here is called olfactory sulcus. The olfactory sulcus. This is called olfactory because it's lodged by this structure which is olfactory bulb and tract begins here as medial and lateral olfactory stria. The olfactory bulb and tract are running on the olfactory sulcus and they are important in the smell pathway. The other sulci here, they are forming H-shaped as you can see. These are called orbital sulci. The gyri on the orbital surface this gyrus medial to the olfactory sulcus, this gyrus is called gyrus rectus. So this is gyrus rectus. If you continue with the gyrus rectus, it will be continued on the superior lateral surface of the brain as the superior frontal gyrus. And these gyri, which, uh, is, which are lying around the H-shaped orbital sulci, are called orbital gyri. The superior, the inferior, medial and the lateral orbital gyri. The part uh, of the inferior surface of the brain which is uh, lying posterior to the uh, stem of the lateral sulcus is called the tentorial uh, surface of the brain. Sulci to be identified on the tentorial surface of the brain. The first one is this sulcus here. This sulcus is the most medial part and it separates between the midbrain, which is this part, and the tentorial surface of the brain. This sulcus here is called hippocampal sulcus. This sulcus is called hippocampal sulcus. The second sulcus is this one here, begins from the occipital pole and runs forward to the temporal pole. This is the temporal pole. This is called collateral sulcus. This is the collateral sulcus of the brain. So this is the hippocampal sulcus and this is the collateral sulcus of the brain. Lastly, the occipital temporal sulcus. This is the occipital temporal sulcus, which is running from the occipital pole to the temporal pole of uh, the uh, tentorial surface. So the hippocampal is the most medial one, the collateral, and then the occipital temporal. These sulci are dividing the tentorial surface into three gyri. The part between the hippocampal and the collateral is called the parahippocampal gyrus. So this gyrus is called parahippocampal gyrus because inside this gyrus we uh, have an important part of the limbic system which is called hippocampus. It plays an important role uh, also on short-term memory. Uh, it's called hippocampus which lies inside this gyrus. And between the hippocampal 
بتوين ده كل ذا اللاترال تو ذا هيبو كامبل جايروس اور ذا بارا هيبو كامبل جايروس بتوين ذس سالكس كولاترال اند ذات وان ويتش از ذا اوكسيبيتو تيمبورال ذس از ذا ميديال اوكسيبيتو تيمبورال جايروس سو ذس از ذا ميديال اوكسيبيتو تيمبورال بتوين ذا كولاترال اند اوكسيبيتو تيمبورال اند ذا لاترال تو ذس سالكس ويتش از اوكسيبيتو تيمبورال هير the most lateral part of the tentorial surface is the lateral occipital temporal so this is bara hippocampal gyrus medial occipital temporal and the lateral occipital temporal gyri the most anterior part of the uh, bara hippocampal gyrus this rounded area is called the ancus so the ancus is important because it contains a uh, a nucleus inside the brain from the basal nuclei of the brain it's called amygdala or amygdaloid nucleus and this nucleus contains the uh, centers for smell and it also plays an important role in the function of the limbic uh, system uh, this rounded area here on the inferior surface of the brain is very important and it's called interpeduncular fossa The interpeduncular fossa, the boundaries of the interpeduncular fossa, it is bounded anterior by this structure. This structure is the optic chiasma. The optic chiasma is formed by the cessation of these two structures, which are the optic nerves. And it gives origin posterior to the optic tracts. The optic tracts are uh, bounding the structure here, which is the midbrain. So the optic chiasma uh, is located anterior to the interpeduncular fossa. This fossa is bounded posterior by this structure. This structure is the pons, and this is the upper border of the pons. So the upper border of the pons is forming the posterior boundary of the interpeduncular fossa. And it is bounded laterally on both sides by the optic tracts and this structure. This structure is called cerebral peduncles. Cerebral peduncles are connecting between the midbrain and the cerebral hemisphere on each side. They are called the cerebral peduncles. So, this interpeduncular fossa is very important because it contains a, a major circle that is responsible for the arterial supply of the whole brain. It's called the circle of wheels the circle of wheels which uh, is running here uh, on the interpeduncular fossa is formed by this artery which is called the basilar artery the basilar artery runs on the basilar group on in front of the pons and it is by dividing into two posterior cerebral arteries this is the posterior cerebral artery on this side and it curves here to the posterior part of uh, the brain and supplies the thalamus and uh, the occipital loop. Then we have this artery which is the internal carotid artery. Internal carotid artery is one of the two terminal branches of the common carotid uh, arteries, common carotid artery in the neck. The internal carotid artery enters the skull From the carotid foramen and it divides into anterior and middle cerebral artery arteries the anterior cerebral artery is this artery which is uh, lying in the anterior part of the brain it sinks here on the longitudinal fissure and curves on a structure inside the brain on the medial side called corpus callosum it runs on top of the corpus callosum in the callosal sulcus And the middle cerebral artery is running here on the posterior ramus of the lateral fissure and supplies most of the superior lateral surface of the brain. So we have a circle, closed circle, by two communicating arteries. The first one between the two anterior cerebral arteries and the second one between the internal carotid artery and the posterior cerebral artery. And this closes the circle of wheels. So the circle of wheels is composed of anterior cerebral artery, anterior communicating artery, 
and then anterior cerebral artery on the opposite side, posterior cerebral artery, the posterior communicating artery, the internal carotid artery, and then the anterior cerebral, anterior communicating between both sides.